we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started our videos are made possible by ranger rob poopy bags available at amazon right now. hello everyone and welcome to easy street easy street can be found on spreaker and uh cutting edge radio network and all, all kinds of different platforms but um today is a day where we're discussing after the fact that we have a new president and we're a kind of a democratic majority and everything uh, i i i think there's a concern out there that for folks that are patriots or people that are preppers or um, getting prepared, that the biggest concern that we're all going to have and, and will have is um, is a whole different flavor in our media. Now, our media, if you don't think there's a difference, let's just take something simple. <laughs> Sorry. Dog's getting into some. Let's take something simple just to kind of give you an idea how different the media treats the different parties. Let's talk about our first ladies. We had Melania before, a beautiful woman, very elegant, really not controversial at all. Did you ever see her on any magazines, any time they emphasize her clothing or her fashion or anything like that? And the answer is no. But Within days, when uh, the new president got in, they're already starting to highlight the first lady uh, on different fashion things and, and, and stuff. Just watch the difference. And so my concern is, is now we're going to see a media that embraces uh, liberalism. And um, before I forget anything here, I, I do have construction going on in our house. Uh, uh, having sighting done. So there's going to be pounding in the background. So I apologize. Just got to do it. So anyway, with the media now being soft, really, I mean, and non-critical, um, we're going to have this sense of, of relaxing and kind of putting our guard down. And I kind of, I'm kind of bringing this up because I watched um, Prepper Nation. He was talking about the same thing where he's just like, Ignore um, the politics, which actually that's kind of what they want you to do. <clears throat> and uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on now that we won't hear about. You know, we complain about um, the past person uh, 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 being on Twitter too much and, and, and stuff. But what he gave us is awareness. So what we ought to be is thankful for the last four years of, yes, it was a rough rough road and, and the person wasn't a politician, but he exposed things that we need to know that we sh needed to know about, like how our media works and the swamp and uh, all the uh, regulations and waste of money, which are all coming back and it will be in, in, invisible again because that's how our media seems. I don't know. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't understand why Big companies all, all support this because in the long run, it, it hurts them and it hurts their employees. But, um, you know, uh, wow. So anyway, my message today is for those of you that are in prepping and being more self-sufficient to not stop. Um, the, you know, uh, Prepper Nation was saying he was getting uh, notifications as well. Nothing happened and things were calm and there was no problems at the inauguration and things like that. Why in the heck was I prepping and getting ready for? And and his answer was really good. Uh, you're welcome. I just saved you a lot of money on, on food and stuff like that because the price of everything's going to go up. So what we need to do is observe not so much the news anymore because we're not going to get news. We're going to get fluff. But what we will see is creeping up prices on fuel, which, by the way, if fuel goes up, that kind of helps like Texas and places like that. They really do need the fuel prices to go up because they just can't survive at the low uh, rates of um, it needs to be $80 a barrel. And, and it's too bad and it's hard, but that's the reality of it. 
and uh, can I have my coffee? So uh, the big thing is, uh, so we're all going to think, oh, everything's peachy cream. But what we really need to do is now that we're educated from the last four years of seeing what the real politics are about, start paying attention to food prices. Start paying attention to fuel prices. And also realize you're going to pay more in taxes. And food, for example, if you have uh, make all companies pay $15 an hour, uh, that's great for those people who are on minimum wage. I could totally understand why they would be excited to see that. However, what happens is businesses already struggling from uh, the COVID stuff, um, they got to pay those people. And that means their costs went up. Well, where does that money come from? It comes from selling their product or service. So if a cheeseburger, let's say, is three bucks, five bucks, <laughs> say five bucks, and you just raise the cost of doing business, that burger has to go up to six or seven bucks. Uh, that milkshake's got to go up another 50 cents. Um, Everything across the board. Same thing with grocery stores and all that stuff. Prices will have to go up. So the rationality is, oh, yes, everybody makes $15 an hour. But now that you're paying more, did you actually get a raise? So businesses can only pay what they're capable of paying. And whoever is willing to work for them for that pay is fair. Um, so that's just the reality of it. So does that mean we need to stop prepping? Everything's cool. Hey, everything's wonderful. No. Well, prepping, in, in a sense, is a big food-saving cost. <laughs> right now, if you buy it now, three months from now, when the prices go up, you're actually saving money because your cupboard's full of food that you paid less for. But this is the time to start learning how to, pr uh, how to do prepping. <clears throat> it's also a time to learn how to do food preserving. Now, uh, I, I say this, and I'm not bragging or anything like that. I say this because I want to make sure people know I practice what I preach. This year is insane. <laughs> One is I'm getting a whole bunch of things done in this house because I bought a, a house, uh, some property, uh, five acres. And I need this house to last a long time. Why? Because when I'm gone, I want one of my kids to have it. And it's going to be a gem, <laughs> but it's going to take a lot of effort on my part to have it be a gem. So I'm having new roof put on, new siding put on, having new uh, uh, utility buildings put in, um, a place to raise chickens and uh, rabbits and, and things like that. And now it's time to start focusing on the garden. <laughs> yeah, the garden. Um, one is... There doesn't seem to be a shortage on seeds, but there seems to be a lot of orders for seeds. So I would highly recommend, if you're interested in a garden this year, to start hustling. One is, it's not a bad time to buy your, your potting soil and things like that because the price will go up because of demand. So uh, I highly recommend this, you know, early in this season, and it's only January here, uh, to start getting all the things you want for your garden, uh, especially if you need soil. Uh, buy it now before the demand goes up and the prices will go up. Also, start ordering your seeds and starters. Um, yeah, this is the time to do it. And so uh, Sherry and I both have heavily invested in uh, new seeds coming in. And uh, we're also um, now getting in the mode of what do we need to do to have our uh, we have a green room where we can do our starters. We almost have our greenhouse done. Um, and also we have a uh, more than oh, about a 30 by 30 growing area for vegetables and stuff, which is not big enough in my <laughs> sense of the word. But um, I'm also in a new region and I've got to learn how to grow things around here. <laughs> so I also have a lot of above ground um, uh, planters I need to build, which means I need a lot of soil. And so instead of buying bags of soil, I think I'm going to order a truckload. Um, and I'm going to be spending a lot of money. But once my soil's here and I maintain it and treat it, it will last a long time. I mean, years. 
wish I could grow my own coffee. So anyway, this is no time to relax. Um, it's going to feel softer. The media is going to feel softer. And um, we won't have an advocate at all giving us hints of what's going on. And even the uh, media that was our warriors may be suppressed. So it's really important that we observe, that we pay attention. Um, first of all, you're going to notice that like some of the uh, organizations that were causing havoc with our country are still here. And they're not happy even with the other <laughs> team members. So uh, we definitely have some issues here. And in uh, other countries are really trying hard to break away from the American dollar. And so a lot of interesting things are going to happen. But um, I can tell you some of the things that even a Canadian paraper was talking about today was, you know, what's a good investment uh, for the future? And so my future wealth will always not be necessarily trying to get rich with, you know, currency and all that stuff. What I like to uh, do my this year is get wealthy and assets like gold and silver, food, <laughs> um, tradable commodities and stuff. And so, uh, yes, I'll, I'll always be a poor man, I guess. I guess I won't be one of those guys driving a Corvette. Um, but there'll be a time with the things I have and the things I'm collecting for prepping purposes will make me a very wealthy man because I'm going to have something that everybody's going to want because they didn't have the intuition to get it themselves because they couldn't see the future. So once again, uh, I've done shows here before on Easy Street about being a visionary. And uh, I can I can see a picture of things getting tougher. Even though we may have a softer uh, politics, uh, the reality is going to hit us in the wallet. The reality is food shortages in the future. Reality will be that the dollar is going to drop. It has to. The biggest scary reality is our stock market is insane. And it's people like, oh, it, that reflects the economy. And it's, no, the big movers in the stock market are your big box stores and big companies like Tesla or uh, Apple or Amazon. Um, and then there's some below that. They're the ones, that's where all the money's being spent and, and sold. And eventually that'll get old. And what I don't understand is why like Walmarts and Amazons are pushing for all this craziness about uh, uh, being liberals and stuff because when everybody's unemployed, it affects them too. I, and I, I don't get it. And that's the other big circumstance out here is, is um, big box stores or big companies look at when people are let go to replace it with automation uh, as best as possible, which means more jobs gone. So the other big thing is housing market, all that stuff has got to go down eventually. It's going to crash and burn. With all this unemployment, you can only push the stuff out or having mortgages slid to the side or, or uh, student loans uh, pushed out to the fall. You can only do that so long. And eventually people want their money. And what I don't know, and I love to hear the answer, is like these student loans being slid, are they still charging interest or penalties on it? That would be interesting. And what about these mortgages being slid? What's the deal with those? And and how can you keep pushing back people's rent? Moratorium, they say. How can the people that own those commercial buildings and, and own those homes survive without income? They eventually have to do a bankruptcy or have to sell the building or do something. Um, if they're not making income, how do they pay their mortgage? How do they pay their loans? So there's no way that all these uh, unicorns and butterflies that we have, the feeling we have right now, 
um, now that we have a new regime, is um, uh, going to last long. Reality is going to hit in, hit eventually. It's got to. And they can only put a Band-Aid on it so long. And what I'm asking you guys to do, especially with this show, is to pay attention to prices of things. Pay attention to housing. Pay attention to food. Um, and then this, while things are still okay for a lot of folks, is the time to learn how to grow a garden for the first time to learn how to preserve food. And, and once again, um, practice what I preach. I've ordered, and I should have in in a few more weeks, my own freeze dryer, which means I can buy bulk food from beautiful places like farmer's markets and stuff and buy mass quantities of it, dry it, jar it, and vacuum seal it, and the food's good for 20 years, 25 years, they say. Um, I'll have a commodity, an asset that people will want, and I'll be able to barter and trade for. And if anything, I can do it cheaply by buying bulk food and preserving it. And my, I, I cannot emphasize enough how less often I go to the grocery store now other than for basics like milk, orange juice, things like that. Um, I find it amazing. I did not expect that because we used to go to Safeway, our grocery store, oh, at least weekly or sometimes even twice a week for stuff and get pretty good orders. And now I just get doodads. And some of those doodads are just kind of extra things that I don't really need. Um, I can survive without. So, uh, this is a video to keep you aware of stuff. Now that we don't have our conservative side media that really, I mean, there's still some out there um, and we're going to have a soft and you guys can see it. Just pay attention. What's the media like now? And what was the media like then? How did they treat the white house and how do they treat it now? Now we're not going to hear about, the things we should hear about, even though they're distressing. Um, we'll get, you know, Trump was good at telling us what was going on and trying to get us to be aware of what's happening in there. And if anything we learned and what we've got from his pre presidency is, is now we know what to look out for and how to read between the lines or understand what the media and these shows are doing. Um, these sh uh, <laughs> these shows on on television now, the Today Show, all those things, it's just propaganda. It's I never heard so much fluff in my life, and it's all uh, amazing that they don't really pay attention at even some of the decisions going on that affects people's jobs and our food and the cost of our food. This green. Um, lifestyle and stuff like that is going to kill us. The money that we're going to put out and the shortages we'll have on food, um, trying to downplay meat and town uh, and oil and gas. Um, the realities is uh, how are we going to function? Uh, I'm sorry. I haven't seen a good electric tractor yet. I haven't seen a good, what about people have trailers? Is there an electric truck out there that can handle pulling trailers or fifth wheels or camping? Uh, is there an airplane yet? A commercial airplane at all that's even close to using electric? I don't think so. And so uh, we don't want that kind of stuff to get too expensive or it's going to be insane. I mean, imagine how much it's going to cost if uh, fuel, if they start attacking oil industry and the fuel prices go up, uh, uh, how much is an airplane ticket going to be to go across country? And then last but not least, you know, well, not last but not least, but, you know, we have the COVID thing. And uh, uh, yes, it's serious. I mean, we, we take it serious, but uh, 
I think another thing that we need to start making sure that we do is be accountable for yourself and not let government be driving you of how to do business or do or survive in the future. Small businesses can handle um, not being regulated other than requiring mask and distancing. If Walmart can be open, if uh, Safeway can be open or, or, or grocery stores, then the little mom and pop stores can be open too, following the same safety of wearing a mask and trying to say, do social distancing. Um, and the businesses, they're quite responsible. They're quite um, capable of making adult decisions of because they want their businesses open that they will be cautious and do their best to protect everybody who goes to these stores. But we can't shut them down. Small business employs the larger majority of Americans than big box stores. So we need to really work hard this year to get these um, uh, governments to say, let us be responsible for ourselves. Let us decide whether I should go into that store or not. Let me decide if they're fall, uh, following safety precautions well enough. But gosh, don't kill these companies because you're hurting your neighbor. Our neighbor may be employed at the little hardware store. Our neighbor needs to uh, uh, do construction and they're held back because of COVID and all this distancy. Um, and uh, having things like lumber and food processing, all that stuff um, thinned out so bad that they can't process anything, which causes you know, supply and demand, which is taught in basic school of uh, um, if there's a lot of demand but little supply, there's only one thing is going to happen. Prices go up. Uh, I'm not kidding you. I went to buy lumber. I actually had to walk away. I needed to buy some 2 by 12 by 10, 10 feet long, 2 by 12s, um, not, not pressure treated or anything. They wanted $25 a board. $25 a board for a two by 12 that's 10 feet long. I was like, oh, got to, I was going to use them for planter boxes. I got to find a new alternative. Um, why is that happening? Well, because it's not being processed fast enough, not being shipped fast enough. So the price goes up. And so uh, anyway, my, my concern is don't, We've been educated. We were lucky enough to have a, a leader in there to expose the things we needed to know about the inside. Well, the inside is going to close that gate again. And those things are still going to go on. We just won't see it or hear about it. And as irritating as that might have been, I am very thankful for the fact that now we know what's going on in government. Now we know what's going on in media. And we also know that the big box stores are taking advantage of all this because the little mom and pop stores have been suppressed and it's they're dropping off like flies. Now we know, and now we need to try to protect them. Now it's going to be a hard road. And we also have to keep in mind that everything looks fluffy. Everything looks like unicorns and, uh, and butterflies right now. But say that to the family that does, you know, can't work because they've just been laid off and they're getting unemployment, which won't last forever. And so everything might look good at right this minute. But you need to put on your visionary hat, your visionary um, look into time and ask yourself, can we sustain what we're seeing here? Massive unemployment, high um, home prices, food shortages. Uh, what about transportation? And now that they're turning on the new Green Deal kind of stuff, what's that going to do to our resources that we depend on? Will gas go up? Will heating gas go up? Propane go up? And the answer is it's going to. And it's going to be subtle. <clears throat> and as that subtleness happens, you'll realize that your money's not going as far. So 
with all these programs also paying for extra money for people's unemployment and checks coming in the mail from the government, it's got to force our uh, dollar to, to be less, um, uh, not worth as much, <clears throat> which in the long run hurts not only our country and us personally, but hurts all the countries around us. So this is, and, and most of the things I'm talking about affects the whole world. And if you pay attention to Russia or China, you'll see that they are kicking and screaming to get on their own currency exchange, to get um, away from the American dollar. And, and so there's a lot of kicking and screaming going on. And there's countries that are starting to surpass our productivity. And that's not good. Uh, it's only going to hurt us. And it's going to hurt all the other free countries out there. So uh, what to get out of this video? Still continue prepping. Ask yourself, what assets do I have that would be valuable later? Um, like silver, gold, even under tough times, that's a recognized commodity. Is if we have trouble with our banks, how much money do you have in there? And what happens if you have limitations to this? I made videos like this before where I told you to go look at what happened in 1929. And there's other depressions too. And you'll realize that the banks were the first culprits out there, our blind little bandits out there, that they're actually worse than the government. And there's a possibility that your money will, one, lose value, two, may not be able to get, get to it or be limited to how you how much money you can take out of the bank. So if you got thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in the bank that you're sitting on as a nest egg, you actually may not have it could disappear very quickly. So pay attention to the stock market, the housing market, the economy. And just be ready and think about it. So many people live for now, live for today only, that they don't think about tomorrow. They don't think about next year. And I'm asking you, please, I'm begging you, please, to start looking ahead, to start playing scenarios out in your head that would be beneficial for your family like food and commodities and taxes and fuel. Are you any wasteful thing that you're doing? And last but not least, debt. Now, some of us realized years ago that we needed to get out of it, and we've actually, Sherry and I have pulled ourselves totally out of debt, and it took years to do it. And there's never a good, um, uh, it's always a good time to start getting out of debt and starting to get rid of credit cards and uh, trying to purchase a house, at least that your money goes into that. You'll never actually ever own a house, even if you paid it off, because you still have property taxes. You could still lose your house if you didn't pay those and stuff. But really pay attention of like, how can I get rid of my debt? How can I get rid of my credit cards? Student loans can never go away, even if you did a bankruptcy. So, guys, it's time to step up, be accountable, be an adult, realize that our culture has changed, our view of the world has changed, and also I think it's time, you know, we should all be grateful for the president we had before, even though he may not have been a person we all loved and uh, that much as a personality, he exposed the government and some of the things going on in the world that now we know. And so we just, it's up to us not to forget. So please continue prepping, continue buying assets and continue being smart and also pay attention to what's going on around you. So thank you for listening to easy street. I really appreciate you guys. Please leave your um, 
comments below. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Bye now. Until next time, start prepping. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.